Hi, Ed Burdett here. As we get into today's reading, I'd like to announce a new feature. Wherever you're listening, you may be able to see the scripture passages for this day's reading. The new feature is that those passages you'll see are now links that you can click on. If you do, you'll be taken to that chapter of the Bible in the translation we read from. This way, if you'd like to follow along visually as you hear the reading for the day, you can do that more easily. I hope this will be helpful as we take in each day's reading, and want to say that this new feature was enabled thanks to support from listeners like you. If you'd like to become a donor to the podcast, you can do that at oneyearbiblepodcast.com slash give. Special thanks to our monthly donors who consistently and faithfully offer their support. And once again, that address is oneyearbiblepodcast.com slash give. I hope you'll find these links to the Bible passages useful, and now for today's reading. Today's reading begins in Judges, chapter 15 starting in verse 1. But after a while, in the time of wheat harvest, Samson visited his wife with a young goat. He said, I will go into my wife's room. But her father wouldn't allow him to go in. Her father said, I most certainly thought that you utterly hated her. Therefore, I gave her to your companion. Isn't her younger sister more beautiful than she? Please take her instead. Samson said to them, This time I will be blameless in the case of the Philistines when I harm them. Samson went and caught three hundred foxes, and took torches, and turned tail to tail, and put a torch in the middle between every two tails. When he had set the torches on fire, he let them go into the standing grain of the Philistines, and burned up both the shocks and the standing grain, and also the olive groves. Then the Philistines said, Who has done this? They said, Samson, the son-in-law of the Timnite, because he has taken his wife and given her to his companion. The Philistines came up and burned her and her father with fire. Samson said to them, If you behave like this, surely I will take revenge on you, and after that I will cease. He struck them hip and thigh with a great slaughter, and he went down and lived in the cave in Etam's rock. Then the Philistines went up, encamped in Judah, and spread themselves in Lehi. The men of Judah said, Why have you come up against us? They said, We have come up to bind Samson, to do to him as he has done to us. Then three thousand men of Judah went down to the cave in Etam's rock, and said to Samson, Don't you know that the Philistines are rulers over us? What then is this that you have done to us? He said to them, As they did to me, so I have done to them. They said to him, We have come down to bind you, that we may deliver you into the hand of the Philistines. Samson said to them, Swear to me that you will not attack me yourselves. They spoke to him, saying, No, but we will bind you securely, and deliver you into their hands, but surely we will not kill you. They bound him with two new ropes, and brought him up from the rock. When he came to Lehi, the Philistines shouted as they met him. Then the Lord's Spirit came mightily on him, and the ropes that were on his arms became as flax that were burned with fire, and his bands dropped from off his hands. He found a fresh jawbone of a donkey, put out his hand, took it, and struck a thousand men with it. Samson said, With the jawbone of a donkey, heaps on heaps. With the jawbone of a donkey, I have struck a thousand men. When he had finished speaking, he threw the jawbone out of his hand, and that place was called Ramath Lehi. He was very thirsty, and called on the Lord, and said, You have given this great deliverance by the hand of your servant, and now shall I die of thirst, and fall into the hands of the uncircumcised. But God split the hollow place that is in Lehi, and water came out of it. When he had drunk, his spirit came again, and he revived. Therefore its name was called En-Hakor, which is in Lehi to this day. He judged Israel twenty years in the days of the Philistines. Samson went to Gaza, and saw there a prostitute, and went in to her. The Gazites were told, Samson is here. They surrounded him, and laid wait for him all night in the gate of the city, and were quiet all the night, saying, Wait until morning light, then we will kill him. Samson lay until midnight, then arose at midnight, and took hold of the doors of the gate of the city, with the two posts, and plucked them up, bar and all, and put them on his shoulders, and carried them up to the top of the mountain that is before Hebron. It came to pass afterward that he loved a woman in the valley of Sorek, whose name was Delilah. 
the lords of the Philistines came up to her and said to her, Entice him, and see in which his great strength lies, and by what means we may prevail against him, that we may bind him to afflict him, and we will each give you eleven hundred pieces of silver. Delilah said to Samson, Please tell me where your great strength lies, and what you might be bound to afflict you. Samson said to her, If they bind me with seven green cords that were never dried, then shall I become weak, and be as another man. Then the lords of the Philistines brought up to her seven green cords which had not been dried, and she bound him with them. Now she had an ambush waiting in the inner room. She said to him, The Philistines are on you, Samson. He broke the cords as a flax thread is broken when it touches the fire. So his strength was not known. Delilah said to Samson, Behold, you have mocked me, and told me lies. Now please tell me how you might be bound. He said to her, If they only bind me with new ropes, with which no work has been done, then shall I become weak, and be as another man. So Delilah took new ropes, and bound him with them, then said to him, The Philistines are on you, Samson. The ambush was waiting in the inner room. He broke them off his arms, like a thread. Delilah said to Samson, Until now you have mocked me, and told me lies. Tell me with what you might be bound. He said to her, If you weave the seven locks of my head with the fabric on the loom. She fastened it with a pin, and said to him, The Philistines are on you, Samson. He awakened out of his sleep, and plucked away the pin of the beam and the fabric. She said to him, How can you say, I love you, when your heart is not with me? You have mocked me these three times, and have not told me where your great strength lies. When she pressed him daily with her words, and urged him, his soul was troubled to death. He told her all his heart, and said to her, No razor has ever come on my head, for I have been a Nazarite to God from my mother's womb. If I am shaved, then my strength will go from me, and I will become weak, and be like any other man. When Delilah saw that he had told her all his heart, she sent and called for the lords of the Philistines, saying, Come up this once, for he has told me all his heart. Then the lords of the Philistines came up to her, and brought the money in their hand, she made him sleep on her knees, and she called for a man, and shaved off the seven locks of his head, and she began to afflict him, and his strength went from him. She said, The Philistines are upon you, Samson. He awoke out of his sleep, and said, I will go out as at other times, and shake myself free. But he didn't know that the Lord had departed from him. The Philistines laid hold on him, and put out his eyes, and they brought him down to Gaza, and bound him with fetters of bronze, and he ground at the mill in the prison. However, the hair of his head began to grow again after he was shaved. The lords of the Philistines gathered together to offer a great sacrifice to Dagon their god, and to rejoice, for they said, Our god has delivered Samson our enemy into our hand. When the people saw him, they praised their god, for they said, Our god has delivered our enemy and the destroyer of our country, who has slain many of us, into our hand. When their hearts were merry, they said, Call for Samson, that he may entertain us. They called for Samson out of the prison, and he performed before them. They set him between the pillars, and Samson said to the boy who held him by the hand, Allow me to feel the pillars on which the house rests, that I may lean on them. Now the house was full of men and women, and all the lords of the Philistines were there, and there were on the roof about three thousand men and women, who saw while Samson performed. Samson called to the Lord, and said, Lord God, remember me, please, and strengthen me, please, only this once, God, that I may be at once avenged of the Philistines for my two eyes. Samson took hold of the two middle pillars on which the house rested, and leaned on them, the one with his right hand and the other with his left. Samson said, Let me die with the Philistines. He bowed himself with all his might, and the house fell on the lords and on all the people who were in it. So the dead that he killed at his death were more than those who he killed in his life. Then his brothers and all the house of his father came down and took him, and brought him up and buried him between Zorah and Eshtaol, in the burial site of Manoah his father. He judged Israel twenty years. The Gospel of John, chapter 2, starting in verse 1. The third day there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee. Jesus' mother was there. Jesus also was invited with his disciples to the wedding. When the wine ran out, Jesus' mother said to him, They have no wine. Jesus said to her, Woman, what does that have to do with you and me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Whatever he says to you, do it. 
Now there were six water pots of stone set there after the Jews' way of purifying, containing two or three matretas apiece. Jesus said to them, Fill the water pots with water. So they filled them up to the brim. He said to them, Now draw some out, and take it to the ruler of the feast. So they took it. When the ruler of the feast tasted the water, now become wine, and didn't know where it came from, but the servants who had drawn the water knew, the ruler of the feast called the bridegroom, and said to him, Everyone serves the good wine first, and when the guests have drunk freely, then that which is worse. You have kept the good wine until now. This beginning of his signs Jesus did in Cana of Galilee, and revealed his glory, and his disciples believed in him. After this he went down to Capernaum, he and his mother, his brothers and his disciples, and they stayed there a few days. The Passover of the Jews was at hand, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. He found in the temple those who sold oxen, sheep, and doves, and the changers of money sitting. He made a whip of cords, and drove all out of the temple, both the sheep and the oxen, and he poured out the changers' money, and overthrew their tables. To those who sold the doves, he said, Take these things out of here. Don't make my father's house a marketplace. His disciples remembered that it was written, Zeal for your house will eat me up. The Jews therefore answered him, What sign do you show us, seeing that you do these things? Jesus answered them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews therefore said, It took forty-six years to build this temple. Will you raise it up in three days? But he spoke of the temple of his body. When therefore he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he said this, and they believed the scripture and the word which Jesus had said. Now when he was in Jerusalem at the Passover, during the feast, many believed in his name, observing his signs which he did. But Jesus didn't entrust himself to them, because he knew everyone, and because he didn't need for anyone to testify concerning him, for he himself knew what was in man. Psalm 103, beginning in verse 1. Praise the Lord, my soul. All that is within me, praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, my soul, and don't forget all his benefits, who forgives all your sins, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from destruction, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies your desire with good things, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord executes righteous acts and justice for all who are oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses, his deeds to the children of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abundant in loving kindness. He will not always accuse, neither will he stay angry forever. He has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor repaid us for our iniquities. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his loving kindness towards those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. Like a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. For he knows how we are made, he remembers that we are dust. As for man, his days are like grass. As a flower of the field, so he flourishes. For the wind passes over it, and it is gone, its place remembers it no more. But the Lord's loving kindness is from everlasting to everlasting with those who fear him, his righteousness to children's children, to those who keep his covenant, to those who remember to obey his precepts. The Lord has established his throne in the heavens. His kingdom rules over all. Praise the Lord, you angels of his, who are mighty in strength, who fulfill his word, obeying the voice of his word. Praise the Lord, all you armies of his, you servants of his, who do his pleasure. Praise the Lord, all you works of his, in all places of his dominion. Praise the Lord, my soul. Proverbs chapter 14, beginning in verse 17. He who is quick to become angry will commit folly, and a crafty man is hated. The simple inherit folly, but the prudent are crowned with knowledge. The evil bow down before the good, and the wicked at the gates of the righteous. Mm -hmm.